Pigeons are good company. Pigeons are my, and it's this wonderful silent friendship. You know, like er, Erica Chong was talking about, you know, this wonderful silent friendship with no words, just glances and gestures. They're faithful and they're affectionate and uh, they land on your head and shoulders and hands sometimes. They wait for me every day up on the wires and they come flooding down like a tornado and wrap you like a cloak. They love birdseed. They adore it. They could be eating trees and grass, but they really like birdseed. They have all the moods. Uh, if I had a little baby bird that, that was laying on my stomach, sitting on my stomach, I put a cookie on my stomach and it stood on the cookie. And then I tried to, to steal a few bites off the edge of the cookie and the bird started biting my hand. It said, said to me, womp womp, which is war, war birds, right? And if they're happy, they say, yep, yep. It's me, yep, yep, covers everything like, have a good day, uh, and all those uh, French, thank you, and, and all that stuff. They say, yep, yep. And uh, <laughs> if they're really happy, the whole flock feels well fed, they say, ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> they got words, but they're on another frequency. And sometimes birds show up at the feed with thread feet and broken legs to be fixed. And somehow the birds told those birds, be here at this time of day in this location and you can get your feet fixed. That means language. You know, they got language. They either got word language or picture language. There's no other way for them to tell stranger birds where to come to, to get fish. I got four or five hundred birds and some of them have babies at home. I've been feeding them every day for eight years. At the same time, and I raised a lot of babies. Maybe 40 babies I've raised in my coat from little kitty beaky birds. Pigeons are really dear. They say thank you. They have some words. Their friendship is is uh, immaculate. The scritchy feeling of their little feet and necks on your hands eating the food it's just it's my company every day these this is these are my girlfriends when they're feeding i walk along and i look at all of them to see if i see any broken legs or uh, other disasters that's my chance to spot it you know and when you spot them you sneak up on them and, and reach down and pick them up and then you uh, get your scissors and you turn them upside down on your knee and you take it off for them they really appreciate it you uh, you can fix their feet with your magic hands and then they walk again you know <laughs> and uh, a little across see these are really little beaks these are little metal beak that help the birds. And uh, I, I guess you notice all the angels have wings in the pigeons. So maybe they, maybe their pigeons are angels. <laughs> they come and they show me they got thread on their feet. Uh, that's my bandage. He's, it's been about 10 days. He's doing fine now. Doing great. Every, every favor done to a creature is another credit in the beyond. You make it. Pigeons have all the moods we do. I had, the, the bird said, there's a man that feeds us all the time. Send him a magic bird. And the bird sat on my hand and she turned her face to 12 different moods. She went. 
And then she laid her head way back over her back and was coquettish behind some feathers. And she, like, like I call it face dancing. And then she, and she showed me, see, we have all the moods. Deeper than language is mood. We have all the moods. We're just some flying human beings. I've, I have names for a few of them. I'm looking for skinny right now, but I don't see them. See, here's skinny right here. This is my little bird. Yeah, I'm not supposed to do this. This is a, against my honor with them. But I just saw I pick her up so you can see. Get your picture taken, Skitty. <laughs> you know, I'm not supposed to pick them up. It's my honor with them. My honor with them is I don't pick them up for nothing, just if they need it. Now, I just broke the honor with her. She probably won't trust me now. Skinny, skinny. I tried several times to impeach City Hall entirely over the uh, law against feeding pigeons. If you please don't put me on camera, don't put me on camera, man. If you go someplace else and quit doing that shit every goddamn day. I'm about to commit a crime. I'm about to feed a pigeon in San Francisco. I, I threw in the law against smoking reaper also, and the, and, and the parking meters hardest on the poorest and a strangulation crucifixion rent on all of us. They could have regulated rent, but they, they didn't want to. And so they just threw us to the wolves and vampires of neck-sucking rent and did us in. I met wolves that you could ride like a horse. I met a dragon. I didn't believe in dragons. I didn't believe in spirits, God, or anything, but there it was. And I met uh, six-foot Lord Magi ants in robes, and they said, you saved the ant in St. Louis. You can be with us. And I gradually became a creature person over in Dreamland, and then when I returned from Dreamland, I started noticing my side that I joined, you know, spiders, ants, birds, Whenever I came across one, I would pay attention to them, give them some food or something. And I really like my side. It's, I think it's the only side there is in the universe, United Beings. I'm, I'm recommending to everybody join the creature United Beings side in the universe, you know. Um, benefit mice, rats, ants, even roaches, you know. I, 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 so I got to get over my squeamishness about roaches. I started feeding them. Pretty soon I was their friend, one drop from way up down onto my head, ran down over my nose and mustache, and jumped in my hand, and set up on my finger. Ta-da! You know, and uh, mem, yo, you know. And I, uh, I gradually got over my fear of, I was scared of spiders, I was scared of bees. If a bee came around, I would, you know, duck. Finally, I thought, what the hell, you know, it's like getting a shot at the doctor if it bites you. I'll just dare it, and the bee finally lit on my finger. At that day, I became Buddha, you know. I was feeding pigeons and seagulls up here in the park, and the rats were hiding in the underbrush. They were living out there pretending to be squirrels and trying to get away with it. And they saw me and uh, showed themselves. I started bringing them bagels every morning and pretty soon, and throwing them out in, into the underbrush. Pretty soon they came along here and they put in holes all along this wall, like a milk route. And I would come and feed them the bagels every day and the park people saw it and poisoned them. I mean, they think, what do they think parks are for? Parks are for little creatures to, to live in. People are scared of rats, you know that? They're cowards, they're scared of rats. And when I would sleep up here at night, the rats would come in the middle of the night and walk across my face and jump on my stomach and nip my fingers without drawing blood to wake me up to feed them. I would have something in my back for them. Also, I used to be scared of spiders. Then I met this little spider. It was, I was living in my car that time, and this little spider was up there, so I started playing the music with my earphones and blowing them a little dope smoke. And the spider ran and jumped on my hand like a dog and went up to the tip of my finger, dropped a line, turned upside down, 
and dance like this, you know, because what else could he say? He can't talk to me. Then he hid in my hair one night and rode all around all day long, taking a chance on getting masked to see my day. In the middle of the afternoon, he comes down by my eye, says, I'm here. And then he goes back and comes down by my nose and looked at this girl I was talking to right in Cyber Copy down the street. So friendship was established. He showed me all his tricks. He would stand on my finger, and I guess he would throw a line to my nose. I didn't see him do it. And then he'd come walking as if on air across toward my face. I thought, he's levitating, he's levitating. But I think he had a line, and he, and he showed me all his tricks. This little spider. It shows that conscious, consciousness, humor, and intelligence go very deep. And we're not the only smart boy around the planet. Now skinny has gone up, I don't know if she'll come back. Now I write my rag, the rag that changed the world. Every day I start with a whole new blank canvas, and then I cast word paint upon it. Then I cast it upon the world. In white October, when the thistles, children, a parachuting into neighbor fields, the paid ram itching in the woolly falls, the tractor's herring bone and the chill sun turning to ribs of stone, and rivers, streams, the green blood of the weeds, the insect's marrow, all that leaps or runs or burrows, so feeling, give themselves over, as if each were powerless to turn against that turning that claims them all only by claiming each. Then my shaken at heart, for if the turning into white October takes thee, I too return. Human beings think they can persecute things and get away with it because they believe in death. Death will get them out of it. We might have beat up on everything and, you know, shocked their feet in the, in the labs and harmed on them, but then death will cut everything off and then there is no repercussions, no follow-up. But what if death doesn't exist? What if there is no such thing as death? What if there's conservation of energy instead? And uh, like the smoke escapes from the log, the soul escapes from the body, and then we can get even. <laughs> Spirit physics and dearness to creatures is the first priority of Earth, and everything depends on it. Close down the animal labs or lose your species, human beings, because you, you shall be a lab rat in the next go-round. We need man to quit breeding and uh, replant the planet with what the creatures like and leave. I will now do my victory dance. Me. The man who returned to earth from the spirit, arrows from the dead. Here he is, proof positive that the soul exists, human being, is in this rag. And so I'm not quitting. It's to the death and beyond the death, as far as I'm concerned. And I will set the standard also.
think like the universe. Think big.